Thereafter, when we oppress our fellow human beings, also our deeds are spoilt. They are messed to the degree that there is a hadith known as the hadith of the bankrupt person where the messenger, peace be upon him, asks, and I'm sure we've repeated this many times, Atadruna manil muflis, do you know who is the one who is a bankrupt person? And the companions respond saying he is one who does not have any gold or silver. In our terms, one with no cash. He's a cashless person. And perhaps he owes people so much. So the messenger says, no, a true bankrupt person is he who comes on the day of judgment with a lot of good deeds next to his name. A lot of good deeds. For example, he would have salah. He would have lots of salah. Perhaps he might have salah in the masjid with jama'ah in the first line. And perhaps he might not have missed his tilawa or recitation of the Quran. Perhaps he might have engaged in lots of remembrance of Allah. Perhaps he might have given out lots of charities. Perhaps he might have gone for Hajj and he might have fasted in the month of Ramadan. And he might have engaged in the voluntary fast. Now these are all signs of what we would term a pious person. Today, my beloved brothers and sisters, piety has become an item and an issue that people gauge by looking at the outward appearance of an individual, not realizing that the true root of piety is the heart. It begins to show outwardly, correct, but not necessarily everyone who looks outwardly pious is actually internally pious. And not everyone who looks outwardly impious would be internally in the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the rectification of both the internal as well as the external. So there would be people who have come with lots of good deeds, many good deeds, but Ya'ti, when he comes, he would have slandered this one. He would have backbitten this one. He would have usurped the wealth of this one. He would have wronged this one. He would have sworn the other. Shatam Shatam means one who abuses verbally the others. Today we abuse those who work for us. We abuse our colleagues. We abuse our children. We abuse our spouses. We abuse our parents verbally. How dare we do that when we are looking forward for the day we meet our maker? How do you think it would be when we present our swear words in front of the Almighty and say, Ya Allah, when I was in the world, you gave me one chance and here you are. Ya Allah, these are the words I used to use. A'udhu Billah. May the Almighty protect us from the devil. So the devil comes to us and he makes us harm someone, backbite someone. For your information, brothers and sisters, Backbiting is so dangerous that today we are living in an age of backbiting and people do not understand the meaning of backbiting because when you say my brother, my sister, do not talk about this person bad because they are not here, they will tell you but what I am saying is true. That shows the height of ignorance because the messenger peace be upon him has explained very clearly that when you are speaking the truth about someone else in their absence in a way that they would not like it if they were present that is known as backbiting so to speak a lie is actually worse so if you want to know what is backbiting brothers and sisters it is to speak the truth about someone in their absence in a way that if they were there they would not like it may the almighty forgive us all i would like to think that perhaps the bulk of us Perhaps myself included, sometimes we need to raise the awareness within ourselves of these type of words and statements. May the Almighty forgive us. And for your information, when you backbite my brothers and sisters, immediately your salah is given away, your zakah is given away, your good deeds given away. You might be the most pious person externally, but because you have harmed someone through backbiting alone or spreading rumor about them, or slandering. Slandering would mean al-buhtan, to create a lie about them. You would have given away your charities. And this is why it's important for us to know that the Almighty has warned us through the lips of the messenger, peace be upon him, regarding every single way that the devil comes to us in order to snatch our deeds away. Do not let your deeds be snatched. If you would hold a piece of gold, you would make sure you hold fast upon it. If you were to travel to a country where they told you, be careful of the handbag snatchers, perhaps you will make sure your handbag is well tucked in, in a way that it, nobody would snatch it. Why are our deeds exposed and we are allowing everyone to snatch our deeds in a way that on the day of judgment, when we get there, this hadith continues, it says, so this man's good deeds go to the other and the, the, the rest of the good deeds go to all those whom he has oppressed in any way 
until he is left with no good deeds. But does it stop there? The answer is no. So this pious man whom we all thought was so religious is now strapped of all or should I say stripped of all his good deeds because he has oppressed so many people. And then what happens? There are still a line of people who are waiting for justice because he has oppressed even more by eating their wealth, by harming them, by spreading rumor about them, by doing whatever it is in terms of usurping their rights in the world. So now the bad deeds of those who are waiting, the bad deeds of the oppressed will now go on to the record of this man who owes them because of oppression. So perhaps an adultery might go into his account. Perhaps another sin may go into his account. Perhaps the missing of a prayer might go into his account until he is taken and thrown and cast into hellfire. May the Almighty safeguard us. That is by far one of the most serious a hadith or traditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it comes to the spoiling of our good deeds. Brothers and sisters, we take it for granted. Today, we spoil our good deeds with one SMS, with one email, with one phone call. We spoil our good deeds. Brother, you have your salah. Protect it. Protect it very dearly. And this is why in the Quran, Allah says, Man Whoever comes with a good deed shall have his good deed multiplied tenfold. The reason some of the Mufassireen make mention of the fact that to protect a good deed is ten times more difficult than to engage in it. So if you engage in a good deed, mashallah, you deserve a good deed and you deserve the multiplication if you bring it with you on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us bring our deeds on the day of judgment and may he make us from those who can protect ourselves.